Hello everyone, my name is Shayla Baker. I am recording this video for module eight of my NBST 800 class, uh, Backgrounds in Early Christianity. I'm going to be giving a brief overview of the book Destroyer of the Gods by Larry Hurtado. Not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but that's the shot we're giving it and we're gonna stick to it. So um, personally, I overall really enjoyed the book. I thought it was a great book. I enjoyed it so much that I recommended it to a few of my friends who I know are really interested in the background of the New Testament. And it was a really quick, easy read. I felt that it was full of really wonderful information that shed light on how odd early Christianity was in comparison to the culture that it sprang up in. Um, so it was really good at those sorts of things. I especially appreciated the various resources that the author pulled into the book into the very first chapter to start his argument, his thesis off really strong. So I appreciated that, thought he had really great resources, really enjoyed reading those. Um, he jumps right into that information and gives plentiful evidence for his thesis instead of kind of building up to it uh, throughout the chapters towards the end of the book, like which is what I feel most authors would usually do. Um, so really enjoyed that. I'm actually going to talk only about chapter th two in regards to this assignment. And um, in chapter two, Hurtado begins by discussing the word religion, um, kind of defining it. And he's attempting to prove that religion in the Roman setting was different from religion today. And he's not wrong. Um, he's absolutely right on that. But he starts by, by mentioning that Western religion, modern Western religion, is an activity that is distinguishable from other areas of life. And I understand what he's trying to say here. Um, because there are people who are believers who don't mix certain areas of their life. They don't mix religion and politics. We're not encouraged to mix sometimes religion and school. We're not encouraged to mix um, sometimes religion and work, depending on your workplace. And so I, I do understand why he's saying that. But at the same time, I feel that for the serious Christian, they do in fact take their faith with them everywhere. Um, personally, my religion, my faith is not at all distinguishable as something that I can put in a little box and carry it around and set on a doorstep when I want to go in somewhere where I don't want to talk about my religion. Um, my faith pervades every aspect of my life, and I feel like the Bible tells us that if you are worshiping and practicing your faith correctly, that's how it's supposed to be. And so I feel like Hurtado had a bit of a disconnect with what serious Christianity looks like in the modern world in that portion of the second chapter. Um, so like I said, I, I understand what he was attempting to showcase, that he was trying to show the differences between um, modern culture and ancient Roman culture, but um, I do feel like he had a misstep in that particular part. Um, I think he probably could have dialed back that entire discussion and um, it would have been a lot less confusing and I really just didn't see much of a need for it just because they didn't have the word religion in um, ancient culture, Roman culture. Um, I felt like he could have kept that information to a minimum and still gotten his point across there. Um, part of my understanding on Hurtado's discussion on religion is his desire, like I was just saying, his desire to emphasize that there isn't an equivalent word in the Roman culture because their sacred practices and rituals were just a way of life, which is what he was getting at. He writes that early Christianity lacked things that typically indicated service to the gods in the ancient world. So we're talking about things such as altars, cult image, a priesthood, sacrifices, and even shrines. Um, so the culture, the Roman culture, would have been fine with Christianity not using any of those things if they had been willing to worship the gods with a little g, the traditional gods of the Roman culture. Um, of course, their refusal to do so, combined with their declarations that everyone should worship the one true God, put a distinction, a very marked distinction, between the Christians and the remainder of the culture. So Hurtado calls the Roman Empire a world full of gods in chapter 2 because as he writes it, there were deities of various kinds and various spheres. There were gods associated with several different areas of life, geographical areas, forces of nature, and even 
cities had their own particular gods. So the idea, the thought of having one God and worshiping one God was very foreign to them. Um, he has that religion was everywhere. It was a part of the fabric of everyday life. There was no part of their life where they didn't offer expressions of reverence to the gods, even if they were visiting another area where they had never heard of the gods before. They still offered reverence to those gods. One thing I found especially interesting was that Hurtado writes that to deny worship to a deity was to deny a god's reality. And I'll be really interested to hear my classmates' thoughts on this, but um, because he doesn't really dive into that any further as far as I could tell. But to me, it meant that to deny worship to a god was to deny that they exist. Um, like I said, he doesn't go into that further, so I'm interested to hear my classmates' thoughts on that. Um, but if that is what he means there, then it is there is absolutely no wonder that it was very serious that the Christians wouldn't honor Roman gods. It means that they were literally denying their existence and the Romans would take offense to that, that the Roman culture, that would make total sense. Um, so when Christians refused to partake in the rituals of the culture, they naturally stood out to offer sacrifices to gods or to participate in celebrations of them would have amounted to idolatry, which the early church clearly understood. Like we can see throughout the New Testament, and Hurtado even talks about it in chapter 2, that Paul makes it very clear what idolatry looks like and what it entails. Um, so no other god is worthy of worship besides the one true god. Um, the early church makes that clear. They make that clear to the rest of the culture. And this stance makes them unlikable. They are not favored by people because of this stance. Um, it stands in blatant contrast to what the rest of the culture is doing. Um, other ways in li of life and beliefs that set the Christians apart was the idea that God had no needs and that he sought after individuals. Of course, the gods never sought after people. So this was an alien concept to Roman culture. And the gods might have been seen as friendly or maybe even kind towards people. But there was no love between humans and gods in the same way that the Christians proclaimed that Jesus loved us or God loved us. And um, we love him and vice versa. <clears throat> so ultimately, Hurtado's entire point for this chapter is to emphasize the exclusivity of the early Christian church in comparison to their Roman cultural counterparts in just day-to-day -day living, day-to-day -day life, day-to-day -day doing things. Um, and so the only weakness that I felt was in the chapter is the one that I already discussed was the initial discussion regarding the term religion felt like it was a little bit overdone. I felt like he could have gotten to the point much faster. And I do feel like um, there was just a misunderstanding of modern Christianity today and what it actually should be looking like, regardless of what he's actually seen. I don't know if the author is actually a Christian or not. Um, in some spots he talked like he was, and in some spots he talked like he wasn't. So I wasn't sure. Um, otherwise, I felt like it was a really strong chapter in the book that did exactly what it was intended to do. It really showed the differences between Roman culture, showed how the Christians stood out as far as life is concerned. And that information, um, I think it really sheds light on the persecution of the early church, especially in Acts. And we see um, the apostles being driven out of areas, being punished, being jailed, being harassed. And it was because they were so countercultural to the point of being offensive. And, and it really just helps us to understand that background better and just sheds light on the entirety of the book of Acts. Um, I think that this information in the hands of church, churches, church members, um, even pastors would be really beneficial to helping people understand what the church should look like in regards to the culture, how countercultural we should actually look. And um, I think it would bolster confidence in our churches today to help us look more countercultural. So I think that would be really beneficial information to the church as a whole. So that is my review and thank you guys for watching and I look forward to reading your com 
your comments. So have a great day. Be blessed, guys. Bye.